I believe the best place to begin, to start, is in the, in the beginning. And therefore, we're going to talk a little bit about Adam and Eve. Something very special came to my mind, to my holy mind, while I was uh, hoping and uh, thinking of the Creator. And with His loving kindness, that it's uh, incredible, it's amazing to see how the Creator can choose. This light is very annoying, by the way. I know it's not yours, just being annoyed here. Thank you. So, it's humbling and also like, it makes me very happy to know that the Creator, He's the Father of Mercy and He's so kind that even though that like to describe his greatness even to start thinking about the creator of the universe the one that knows all the mysteries that nothing is hidden from his eyes that he's everywhere in, in above time in all the generations in every angle filling and surrounding all the worlds even to think about it, such a gigantic creation with such depths and like even to understand part of it is already a genius and the Creator is so divine and above all, all what we can grab and, and grasp with our poor minds and to think that the Creator is so much with you that He's humbling Himself and going to... to to our life, into our bodies, talking to us in our minds and revealing words of wisdom and bringing us to deep conclusions and, and fantastic understandings about our existence, about our mission. Who are we to enjoy such bounty, such spiritual wealth? Now, I was thinking a little bit about Adam and Eve and... It's in my power to help you guys. And I'm willing to do that with all my heart. And I'll offer you something today. And I hope you're going to grab it with two hands. And then your prayers will be answered. And try to understand why am I saying that. I'm not an angel. My wife will testify on that. I'm not righteous. My kids will testify on that. They're here. Right? All good. But the Creator Himself allows us to use His name and to use His power and to enjoy His blessings and to pass it like an illuminating torch from one to the other. And that's the purpose of Torah that has been given to a humble people, to a humble nation. And that's the purpose of us being friends and being called a family and a nation and on and on and on. There is a Midrash that is saying that like that the Creator Himself, He is one and He does not have a partner, He doesn't have a wife so to speak. He does not multiply. Ideally, the will of the Creator was to create a man in his shape, in his figure, that is not multiplying as well, that is not bringing children to the world, that is not getting married and doesn't... And therefore, the first, the beginning of creation, Adam and Eve were one person. It was... Adam, it was the man, it was a person. And inside of him was the feminine side of him. It was the woman, 
It was Eve, but it was not Eve. It was not Adam. It was both of them together. They were one. And then the Creator sent Adam for his first mission on earth to call names to the animals. And the animals, when they have been created by the Creator, they have been created in pairs, in couples. And Adam, he looked and he saw two zebras, two lions. He saw the, the male and the female, all the animals, the apes, the monkeys, all the animals, the birds, the flies, everyone came in couples. And he was calling them in names, a giraffe, a, a, a unicorn, no, unicorn, no. A horse, a donkey. He, like every single one of them, he named them in their names and he saw that he's different than them. He saw that he's one and he won't have a friend for life. And he fell from that to sadness. And he asked for a friend. So the Creator, with his loving mercy, put sleep on the eyes of Adam and took out part of his body, his spirit, his soul, and separated him into two. And it's written that he took the rib from Adam, the word rib, and created the, the, the woman Eve from it. The word rib, tsela, in the holy ancient language of Hebrew, if you write the word tsela, it's also like to say the word tzolea. Tzolea is l- limb? Limping. limping. It's a person that is not able to walk straight. Why? Because he's been separated into two. Problems started to take place. Because he was not an individual anymore. He was not complete. And even though that they were together... And it was about to be amazing and the potential was great. And all the souls, all of us, we were there in that gigantic, great soul of Adam and Eve. But we start limping because of that separation. That separation came out of that sadness that we were not realizing yet as human, as a person, the greatness of the blessing that we received by the Creator to be as Him, that He made us complete. Now, since that day, we are keep on falling and separating and getting into more bodies and more separated and more uh, distance from each other. And the sorrow and the pain and the grief is getting even worse and worse. The only way to fix it all is to come back to that understanding in our mind that we are one soul. People that are desiring with their bodies, people that are thinking with their brain, people that wants to feel, that wants to grab, that wants to hold, they are establishing the separation. And a person that wants to get over it, that wants to break that pattern, that wants to get into the real purpose of our creation, he must understand that he is a soul and not a physical body. Now, as a soul, when you're connecting yourself through your mind with your spirit to the fact that you are spiritual, that you're a soul, when you do that, you're reconnecting yourself to an inner source of energy that can bring down wonders to the world you become powerful in a spiritual way and not limited in a physical way. Because the strongest person on earth, that his strength and power will be physical, will always be weak and pathetic compared to a spiritual being that does not experience death, that cannot be sick, that cannot die. Now the redemption that will take place in our lives the redemption to come will pass us to a stage that is above physicality. And this is the true potential of all the spirits, of all the souls. Now we 
as people must understand that that this is the real mission to connect ourselves to the truth of reality of this creation. Means to the real purpose of creation and to become one with the inner power that gives life to creation. Now everyone feels weak and everyone feels tired and everyone feels broken and everyone are so scared and no one knows what's going to happen and what will be and everyone are terrified and no one has the answer but it's only because that we're trying to lean on something that cannot hold us. When a person comes to an inner decision I'm going to make it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to succeed and he puts all his energy to that direction, he's going to win. He's not never ever going to lose. Because the Creator will provide, will give, will deliver, will bring an inner push, an inner power of, 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 of spiritual energy to uplift you above all the obstacles. Now, in relationship, people are trying to make the other one likes you. People try to impress someone else. People try to call. People try to make connections. People try to think with their mind, all right, what I'm going to do? How I'm going to keep this relationship working? How I'm going to make myself look good? How, whatever, all the thoughts on the efforts, on how I'm going to succeed, on how it's going to work, all those thoughts are coming from a lack of faith, are coming from a lack of understanding. And I'll tell you how a person like me that is married for over 20 years, allow himself even to open his mouth in front of people that desire to get married. How, who am I to talk? I got married when I was 23, my wife, she was 21, and since then we're together. How can I even allow myself to open my mouth and to talk and to give advice to people? Like, who am I? People are trying so hard, people are praying, people are doing so much, and people are learning, people are going to righteous people, to tzaddikim, people are giving money to charity, people are humbling themselves, people are going through hell. And how can I even open my mouth and talk? I'll tell you how. Because I was not licking and eating honey in the last 20 years. And my wife will show also, life is not simple. Life is not easy. And you go through many, many ups and downs and so many downs that are terrifying. And you find yourself struggle for life in so many days and in holidays and in Shabbatot and in, 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 in moments that can seem so beautiful. Suddenly you find yourself that you're wrong. You find yourself that you're selfish. You find yourself that your mind is twisted and bent and you find yourself that you are doing horrible things, even to those ones that you like, even to those ones that you love, even for those ones that you want to give and you want to share and you want to uplift them in the end of the day, suddenly you find yourself to be so selfish and so ignorant and so lack of sensitivity. And then you need to start again to work on yourself and to improve and to work on your skills to listen and to understand and to feel. And that's the mission of every single person on earth. To get married is not a ticket for happiness. To find yourself in the same house with a partner is not a ticket for happiness. It's not a ticket for success. To be an honest person that goes all the way to reveal the good and to provide good and to allow other people live around him is something that can bring you to true happiness. We must understand that we are not separated except of in our minds. And when we realize that, that the true potential of people is through their souls, is to use their souls, their spirits, and to connect ourselves to that inner source, that energy of our souls, and to use that, if we're going to understand that, we're going to shift ourselves to a higher level. We won't be miserable anymore. We're not going to suffer anymore. We're going to come to a place that our prayers will be powerful. That we will be able to affect other people's life. That we will be able to take responsibility and to carry other people with us. That we will be able to support. 
Because when you are separated in your mind and you're a body and you feel weak and you feel that you need support, that you want to be loved, that you want to be appreciated and you have all those weaknesses with you, in that time you're not able to become that person that you, are, you, re, you really are in your true potential. You're not able because you're in a need because you're tired, because you want someone to be there for you. And even if we can understand those desires and we can understand those needs, they're holding us back. And I'm talking about myself while I'm inside a relationship. And when I'm falling to that mindset that I need to be loved, that I need to be supported, that I'm the one that deserves, that I'm the one that should receive, in that moment, I'm destroying everyone around me. That's what I'm doing. And I realize out of many days and hours of pain and struggle that it doesn't work. That in the end, when you are in that need, you're not going to receive what you asked for. But when you give, and when you give from inside, when you give from your spirit, when you are there to dedicate your life to a purpose, to a noble cause, in that time... All your being start being filled with happiness, with joy. You start realizing how powerful you are. And you understand how many things you can do and you can create with the powers that have been given to you by God, by the Creator. And we are not simple people. And I'm here to remind you of your true potential, of those treasures that are hidden inside of you and installed and treasured inside of you for you to use. Because when you feel yourself alone, and when you feel yourself separated, and you feel yourself with all the fears of what's going to happen and what will be, you by that losing, draining all your powers... You're making life worse for yourself. But when you decide, no matter what your condition is, that you're going to be positive, that you're going to be strong, that you're going to go out and show the world who you are, and going to show the good things, the qualities, the talents, your understandings, and you're not scared anymore to express yourself, to be who you are, to share your thoughts, to, to, to express your emotions, your feelings, and you go, and you go out to the world, you're going to see so many opportunities to help and to assist. We are checking things with our physical senses, with your eyes, with your ears, with your mouth, with your nose, with your hands, always afraid and scared what people will say, what people will, how people will comment, how people will think, what will they say, what will happen. All the time we let those fears take the power and the energy from our life. But when you will stop as a person, when I as a person, going to stop being scared all of the time from people's thoughts, from people's opinions. I'll be able to be who I meant to be. I will be able to recognize my real being. Because as for now, even if I look in a certain way and you can recognize me in the street, and even if you can recognize my voice, and even if I express some of my thoughts and you remember them, and you can understand some things about me, the real me is still hidden inside as a little child that is terrified from the rude and harsh world around me and doesn't know how to deal with life. And no one really knows how to deal with life. The only way to deal with life is to throw yourself on the Creator and to establish a real relationship that based on faith and trust in Him. Because you as a person knows that you're not able even to pay your bills, not able to take care of your basic needs. You don't know how to rent a house even if you are in a rental house. You know that you haven't done that. You know that you don't know how to call no one. You know that you don't know how to find your way with ways, without ways. You don't know anything and we know that. We failed in such pathetic situations in life that we realize you don't know how to say shakol niabidvaro on a cup of water. You don't know how to eat your meal. You don't know how to wash your hands. Even if you washed your hands thousands of times, you don't know how to button your shirt. 
Even if you are teaching others on how to do that, if you're going to face yourself in the mirror, you don't have a clue how to live your life. We don't know. Why we don't know? Because we're not counting on heaven. Not counting on heaven it doesn't mean just, all right, Hashem, you'll take care of everything and I'm not doing anything. To count on heaven is to connect yourself to heaven. It's to understand that you are also heavenly. That inside of you there is a portion of heaven, like the verse is saying, that all of our nation are chelek eloka mimal, a portion of heaven from above. We are part of God. Betoch ami anochi yoshavet, inside my people I live. And the Creator lives inside of you, not as a guest, not as a potential friend that you can talk to. He and you and His wisdom, that is our wisdom, is one. It's one unit. The Creator and His children is one unit. It's a family. My kids are doing certain things and they try to hide it from me. I'm looking at them and telling them, it's pathetic. I can read you like an open book. It's simple. Stop like lying or finding, trying to give excuses. Like, I know you. You came out of me. I can understand you. I read you like an open book. It's clear like the day, like the sun and the noon. You, don't, you cannot hide from me. How can it be? Because I'm so wise? No. Because he's my child. And I recognize his evil inclination because it's mine. I see when he's scared because I'm scared in those situations. And I understand why he tries to run away from commitment. Because I am that lazy person that rather to sit on the couch and not to move his feet. Especially two weeks before Pesach. And when you see that, you realize that you are inside your child. And the Creator, He is inside of us. And He is inside of us and He is us. When the Creator is shining, we are shining. When you are, as a parent, you're shining, your child is shining. When you're coming to deep understanding as a a parent, your children are growing and they're achieving things. And when you're lazy, your kids are lazy too. And the Creator light that is shining inside our beings is a never ending ending power is an inner source of energy to make wonders in the world today we fell to such low level in our mind in our awareness that we're so lack of faith we're our la- our self um, 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 what yes that's what I wanted to say but something is holding me back Our self-esteem been destroyed so badly through the generations that today, even if you can recognize certain qualities inside of it, like you see it, you know, or like I'm good with numbers, like I can talk to people, I'm a good seller, like I, I, I have an amazing memory, whatever you find. Me, I don't have all those things that I just mentioned. I just see faces here and I'm trying to, but myself... I have different talents. One is good with music. One can remember. One can talk. One can work. One got strong hands. One, he has the, the mind can plan things. Everyone with his tools. And you know those things, but you still doubt yourself with no end. We've been so destroyed by the evil inclination that dressed itself in people's opinion through the generations, that today even things that we know about ourselves, all right, like I have a good memory, I'm good with numbers, I, I know my ways, I can find myself, I know how to do this, do that. Even those things that you know about yourself, you're afraid to use those things. But that is the mission of the evil inclination exactly. To destroy the person's self-esteem. For him to give up on the salvation when the salvation is right under his nose. Because it's in our power to become powerful like God, as God, with God. Like that Moses was able to open the sea. Not because he was a mekubal or that he, because he was holy. Because Hashem gave him the power. Hashem opened the sea in front of Moses. Bokeh ayam lifne Moshe. Hashem opened the sea. Moses was not the one. 
It was Hashem that opened the sea for Moses and for His people, for us in those days. And when the redemption will come, the Creator will reveal those powers to us and will give the nature in our hands as well. And the new generation that came out of Egypt, everyone saw and everyone enjoyed the miracles and the wonders. And all those things are about to happen and to take place in our lives as well. But we need to reconnect ourselves to that simple faith. That it's in our power to enjoy the spiritual bounty of this world. And we need to remove the curtains. We need to get rid of our fears. We need to go out from our old patterns, from our negativity, from our self-blame, from our low self-esteem, and to rise to the highest places of them all in our minds. And to believe when you pray on something that your prayer is important, and it's making changes in the world, even if you prayed thousands of hours and have not been answered yet. Moses went up to Mount Sinai and spoke for 40 days, day and night, day and night. He didn't eat, he didn't drink, he didn't do anything. He was just talking and talking and talking and talking with no end. And because that he was so stubborn and he was not about to back off, he'd been answered. And we can be answered as well. And every individual can be answered and can see wonders in his life. And also as a public, as a group, we can be answered. And nature does not have a hold on our lives. The fact that you're afraid to be sick, that you're afraid to be poor, that you're afraid to be kicked out of your work or your house, that you're afraid that you're never going to find your match, that you won't have children, all those fears are the negative lashonara, negative bad words of the evil inclination of the snake, that it just wants to break your spirit and to make you give up on the goals that you desire, on your completion, that you will back off from your inner holy desires, that you will drop the ball and going to give up on that game. When it's in your hands to win, when it's in our hands to win, to bring redemption to the wide world, for everyone to be happy and healthy and strong and successful. But everyone are so sad and so depressed and so terrified and don't know what's going to happen and what people will say. And you keep on listening to those negative voices for no reason. And they're eating your heart. They're breaking your spirit. They're your enemy. So why to cooperate with your enemy? Why to cooperate with the one that sucks the life out of your heart? The one that takes out the happiness from who you are? If you're able to live your dream, if you're able to go and to have fun, to be positive about your life, you think that a shiduch, that a wedding will make you a happy person? I can show you people that right after the wedding they realize that they made the worst mistake. Probably some of you are those people. <laughs> the worst mistake in their life. Like, and then you desire that again. I'll give you an advice. Desire to find an inner happiness. And when you'll find an inner happiness inside of yourself, you'll have the power to go and to wash the world with that inner light of your soul. You'll be able to influence the world. You'll be able to make changes in other people's life. And if you're going to find someone that you really like, you'll be able to share that light with him. And that's the blessing of heaven, to bless you from within. Not to think that your salvation is in the hand of another person. If your salvation is in the hands of another person, you are miserable. Because you're never going to be happy. Because he can play with your salvation. He can take it, offer it, give it to you, take it back. Whatever he wants, he can do with your happiness. If your happiness is in my hands, you're a miserable person. Because when I'm going to finish the class, I'm driving back home to my family and you might not see me again. Or at least it's going to take a few weeks until you're going to meet me again. What are you going to do until then? 
You're going to be miserable. You're going to suffer. It's not the purpose of your creation. You are a creation that lives from an inner source of life. You're alive on your own. The Creator installed a soul inside of you and that's your true being. That's who you are. You're alive from within. You have an inner channel to infinity and it's shining. And it's bringing down bounty. And it gives you reasons to live. And it gives you thoughts. And it wakes you up to pay attention to certain things. It wakes you up to take certain turns in life. To work in a certain job. To be in touch with certain people. And you need to count those inner instincts of yours. You need to listen to the inner voice of your soul. How are you going to recognize your inner voice from all the voices that we have in our minds? Some of the voices are so positive and amazing. We wake up and we say, yes, I'm going to succeed. Today is going to be a great day. And in the next day or before noon, already a dark and gray day. And it's horrible. And there's no way that I'm going to make it. And another failure. And another disappointment. How am I going to choose the voice? How am I going to know which direction to take? The Creator is the source of good. The Yetzirah, the evil inclination, He's the source of bad. Everything that takes you to a good place, to a place of happiness, to a place of comfort, to a place of joy, of satisfaction, that is is the Creator's voice talking to you from within. Every voice that is taking you to blame yourself, to hate yourself, to, for, to, to drop off your, your dreams, to give up, to fall to, to depression, to despair, are the voices of the evil inclination of the Yetzirah. Don't follow those. Don't listen to those voices. Even if they are coming out of the mouths of your parents. Even if they are coming out from the mouths of your rabbis. Even if they are coming from the most, I don't know which holy books or amazing inspiring lectures that you hear. If it's breaking your spirit, it's poison. It's poison even if it's called rabbi, I couldn't care less what his name is. It's not important. It's not helping you. You might be allergic to gluten and to rabbi. I couldn't care less what his name is. He can be poison for you. And you should not listen to him. Even if he gives life to others. Even if other people are following him like the light of, of the generation. If he is a poison for you, if he breaks your spirit, if that kind of advice makes you sad and miserable, and then you're going to find yourself in your house alone, crying and lost, that's not the path that's been built and, and set for you. You need to connect yourself to the good in this world. You need to remind yourself that the Creator is supervising on you individually, specifically, privately, based on His understanding of who you are. And He remembers exactly who you are in the roots of your soul. And He already planned everything for you. And you need to connect yourself. It's not important from where. King David said, even if I'm going to walk in the valley of death, even if you're walking in that dark valley of death, shadows, demons, ghosts, fears, negativity surrounds you. You have a way to reconnect yourself to the good from that place. The only way to do that is by being truthful, by being honest. And that's why, like I said before, I can tell you my opinion because even after 20 years of marriage with my wife, I can tell you that when I'm falling to that selfish place of being focused on myself, on my needs, on my desires, on my stupidity, I can lose everything in a moment. I can lose my happiness. And when I lose my happiness, my wife will lose her happiness in the same time. And when my wife will lose the happiness, all the house will lose its happiness. And that's it. It all went down the drain. No happiness over there. But if I will want 
her to stay happy, but I'm not feeding it by being happy. Not by trying to run after her and please her and give her compliments and tell her, oh, you're so nice. If I'm going to lie and just going to say compliments, oh, you're so nice. And in my mind, I'm sad, I'm broken. She's going to sense it. She's going to feel it. She's not going to buy that. She won't take it. Because Adam and Eve, they are one soul. Like we said before. And when you are true soulmates, you are one and you can feel each other. And you can understand each other. A student once asked me, how can I know who my soulmate is? If he's going to check, even, you know what, a prophet will come to him and will tell him, listen, your wife, she's going to be that height, with that color of hair, with that color of eyes, and she's going to be this, and you know her family name is going to be this and that, whatever. He's going to tell him everything about that woman. Still, if he will bring all those women that are answering to that description, he will still have to choose from 100, from 1,000, I don't know. Like he, It won't leave him with one. If you're going to hear the complete physical description of your soulmate, you won't still, you won't be able to recognize that person in public. No way in the world. The only way, and the evidence for that is that you go to a shidduch, to a meeting, and you sit with a person and you talk to him, and you don't know if it's your soulmate or not. You don't have a clue. First meeting, second meeting. You might even find yourself under the chupan. You're still not sure, like... I don't know. The only way to know if your soulmate is really your soulmate is to understand what we just said. That you and him are one soul. How are you going to know by that? If you're going to know your soul, if you're going to understand who you are, you're going to recognize your soul in your partner's soul. You're going to find yourself in him. You're going to find yourself in her. Because you and your soulmate has one soul. The bodies are separated to male and female. But the soul are above gender. The soul are spiritual. And the soul is one. And when you're going to know yourself, when you're going to recognize your real being, you're going to be aware to the qualities that are installed in your spirit. You're going to understand who you are. What makes you happy? What makes you joyful? What gives you hope? What brings you to have faith and trust in heaven and confidence that you're going to succeed? When you're going to know those things about yourself, it will be easy for you to find your match. Because you will find yourself in... In a sea of people. Because yourself you can recognize. You know who you are. The main thing to do. To find your soulmate. Is to find yourself. To find yourself. It's to find the qualities of your soul. It's to stop following your fears. It's to ignore all the negative way of thinking. That is breaking your spirit for years to kick them away from your life no matter in who they are dressing themselves. Who is that person that breaks your spirit? If he kills your happiness, kick him out of your life no matter who he is and which title he holds. If he breaks your happiness, if he drains you out, if he makes you tired... I had a person that I thought that he was the best friend of my life. He, we were so close. Like we, we, we spent so many years together. We were best friends. That's what I felt. My wife always told me, I don't think that he's good for you. It was so hard for me to listen to her. It was so hard for me to listen to her because inside myself, I was afraid to confront him and to tell him that really I suffer from that relationship. I was not honest. I was telling myself that he was my best friend. For years I was buying those nonsense from my own self. I was lying to myself that that's a good friend. Only because that he was claiming that we're good friends. 
But in reality, I was always under him. He was always taking advantage of me. He was always sucking my life from me. He was always above me, always taking things, always thinking a few steps ahead, always taking advantage of me. But I was too scared to listen to that voice that I felt. But with time that I learned to listen to the voice of my wife at least, I was able to understand that she was right. And one day he called me and I told him, you know, can you please don't call me anymore? Like, let's stop pretending to be friends. And he felt like, what? What are you saying? And tried to fight. And there was no one to fight with anymore. I told him, I'm sorry. I just, we fight too many times. I don't want it anymore. Like, don't call, okay? And I hang up the phone. And since that day, I'm free. I'm free from him. He was my enemy. He was taking my life from me. If I'm going to tell you the dark places that he took me in life, and even if it was my fault, and even if I, I was the one that was going with him to those places, and even if I created that competition between us, for me, he was poison. He was killing me. Even if there are qualities in him, even if there are amazing things in him, I don't know. For me, he was a devil. In my life, he was a devil. He was killing me. And it took me a long time to realize that I need to reject him from my life. Because he's taking away my positivity, my hope, my belief and my faith in myself. If you want to succeed, you need to believe in yourself. To believe in yourself is to give yourself a chance with no end. Is never to give up on yourself and on your dreams. And it's always to believe in yourself. And it means that you should give yourself a credit even if you failed one billion times in your life. I once wanted to buy a house in Jerusalem. Some thought came to my mind. I didn't know what to do. How you buy a house with no money? I said to myself, you know what? Do what that um, what was his name? The one that, uh, that brought rain. Chonia um, Meagel. I said, you know what? Do what Chonia Meagel was doing. Go in circles. Circle the house. That, a thought that came to my mind. And I went and I was going every night for my house. And I was circling the house that I wanted to buy. And I was circling it. And I was, I don't know. It, I felt that that's how, the way that I'm going to buy that house. And I was circling the house. And I was praying to Hashem. And I was telling Hashem, please, and let me buy that house. And I, I don't know why. But Hashem put that in my mind to walk in circles. Someone else, Hashem will put in his mind to go to pray in the Western Wall. There was a person, it's a famous story, a person from New York that wanted to find his soulmate. He said, I'm going to go to graves of Tzadikim in the Holy Land of Israel. He took a flight, went down in, in, in Ben Gurion, went on a cab and, and straight to Jerusalem, said to the taxi driver, I want to go to the Western Wall. While he's driving, he thought to himself, you know what? I'm going to stop in Haram Enuchot, in the grave of um, Mordechai, Rabbi Mordechai Sharabi and his wife Leah, and I'm going to pray over there for a Shiduch, and then I'm going to go to the Kotel. All right, that was his decision. He went, stopped, the taxi driver stopped over there in Haram Enuchot, the Tziyun, the grave of Mordechai Sharabi and his wife, Leah. And he's over there praying, please Hashem, I came from New York, help me, I want to find my soulmate, I want to find my Shiduch, please answer. While he's talking, his curious eyes are finding a certain small note over there folded on the grave, on the tombstone. He took that note, he opened the note, he sees a phone number. He didn't know what to do, but, you know, hands are very fast. He put the note in his pocket, and he's going back to the, to the cab. He sent a message, he made a phone call, he said, whatever, talk to the person over the phone. And it's a woman, hello, how are you, I'm sorry, like maybe I was all wrong taking the number, but I don't know what, what crossed my mind, whatever. All the, 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 the excuses he could find in his pocket for opening a note that was not his. I came to the holy city of Jerusalem to pray for a shidduch. Oh, it's amazing, she's saying to him, I was there as well, 
also praying for a shidduch in Israel? Okay, where are you from? New York. Where in New York? Same neighborhood, same street, two blocks away from his house. In the same night, he took a flight back to New York and they got married. Why? I'll tell you why. People will say because of the power of Rabbi Mordechai Sharabi. Another person going to say because of his Mesirut Nefesh. I think because that he followed his heart. I think that he listened to the inner voice of his soul that told him to go in a certain direction. And that direction was the path that had been created just for him. One person will surround a house in circles. One will go to the Western Wall. One will go to the Holy Land of Israel. One will decide to read Mishnayot. One will go and talk to Hashem. And one will decide to dedicate his life to help children. I don't know what. But when you will walk, when you will follow the inner light of your soul, the potential, the true potential of your soul will start shining. And it will bring the salvation that you need to your life. You're going to see the wonders of heaven that are installed inside of you. Inside of you there is that ancient wisdom that has been given to our ancestors. And lead them to the path of truth, to the real place of heaven, to the holy land of of Israel, to the holy city of Jerusalem. They have walked based on on their inner senses. They followed an inner light, an inner connection with the Creator. They were not following people. They were not following people's advice. They were not following the outside world. They were following an inner world. They connected themselves. You cannot connect yourself to your inside as long as you hate yourself and you disrespect yourself. And you blame yourself. Stop your journey. And accept on yourself to start over. To reconnect yourself from now on based on reality. Not based on your fears, on your patterns, on burns from the past. Check in every situation if it's good or not. But follow your instincts. Follow the inner voice of your soul that is guiding you. And don't be scared. Don't be scared to move states. Don't be scared to make aliyah. Don't be scared to make that phone call. Don't be scared. And even if you're going to confront the closed door, even if you're going to confront another failure, keep on following your inner voice. You will see that it will bring you to the salvation of your life and not only your life. The general, general salvation of all our nation. Our nation is not only the Jewish people. It is the 12 tribes of Israel that are waiting for salvation. It is a whole wide world salvation. And it's in our power. We fell down from our faith in that destiny of complete redemption and complete salvation. Therefore, we're scared to believe in ourselves. But in a place that there is no person to replace you, you need to be that person to make the change. You should be that one to claim the salvation. You should be that one to bring that salvation for yourself to your life. And you should count on yourself on that way. You should believe in yourself that your understandings are inner. If you're coming from an honest place, you should count on those understandings and to follow them with no end. If you find yourself that you're negative, that you're scared, that you don't know what to do, you cannot follow those negative voices. Like we said before, those are the voices that are breaking your spirit. But when you feel uplifted, when you feel inspired, when you feel that there is hope, when you feel that there is a direction that you feel connected to, something that gives you energy, that gives you hope, go on that direction with no end. Don't ever stop walking in that direction. And there you will find all your treasures, all the sparks that you lost until now. You're going to find them. And they are yours to claim. We are not allowed to give up on our dreams. We must claim our salvation. We must demand it. We must insist. 
like that Moses insists, like all the righteous ones really insist. And therefore their prayers were powerful and strong and they have been answered. And we should allow ourselves to express our real feelings, our real holy desires and to pray with all our heart in our language, our own words and to allow ourselves to desire and to be honest when we pray. And to ask for the highest things. For the most beautiful and satisfying things that we want. A real soulmate. Someone that's really going to understand me. And never to compromise. Never to compromise. Always to desire the one that will answer your needs. Not to compromise. It's not in a physical way. I don't know, maybe I should marry, maybe I shouldn't marry. Not to compromise on yourself. When you feel not comfortable, don't go there. If you feel comfortable, go all the way. If you feel that your happiness is treasured over there, that's your path. Don't look to the sides anymore. No matter what you see, no matter what people will offer you, no matter which warnings you're going to receive, going to hear, if you found a purpose, if you have a strong understanding of what will make you happy, go all the way to achieve it. And don't back off no matter what you'll see with your physical eyes. Because the eyes are lying to us. Because the eyes are bringing the outside world into our mind. But our salvation is coming from the inner world, from the soul from, this, from the Creator Himself. That He's the one that is reviving us. That gives us hope. That gives us life. So on Him we should trust. And we should know that He's talking to us from within. He's the one that wakes you up to desire certain things. And to want and to wish for certain things. And you should listen to those senses of yours. Because they are telling you the truth. They are aiming you to your success. And you should believe in yourself and to follow that inner voice with no end and to go and collect your treasures. If you want to write your names, I promise to pray for every one of you and to dedicate special time for prayer for every individual and also online, everyone that saw this class and will write his name for us, I'll pray for him and for his salvation and in no time may the Creator bless us all that all of our dreams will come true that all of our prayers will be answered and that we will all be strong and will see success for ourselves and for all of our beloved ones Amen Ken Yehir Atzom Thank you Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world for more, please visit emuna.com.